Meteorologist Tim Pandage is here with your tropical update. We've got Fred that is now a tropical depression over the eastern portions of the United States. Grace back up to a tropical storm and gaining strength and Henri, which is moving along through Bermuda and that's a tropical storm that is starting to gain strength as well. Overall, the basin is still very active. Three named storms, two of which over the open waters of either the Caribbean or the Atlantic that both will likely strengthen a little bit more. Fred is on its way out. It's away from its fuel source, the warm waters of the ocean, of the ocean to give it uh, its energy. Here's how it looks on infrared satellite. I mean, it's racing off towards the north. It made landfall about 24 hours ago, but still a tropical depression. Now, overall, wind's not so much of an issue with this anymore. It's the copious amount of rainfall. This is starting to rain itself out, and especially east of the track, there's spin introduced to the atmosphere, the friction, the interaction with the land. And we've got a lot of tornadic activity. You can see these yellow watch boxes are tornado watches and the red polygons are tornado warnings. This has spawned, has had a history of spawning tornadoes over the last 12 hours or so. The track on it, it does move pretty much due north over the coming days and will impact areas even all the way up into the northeast in terms of rainfall. You can see another three to four to five to even six inches of rain, especially in the higher terrain there. The uh, terrain induced rainfall going to really uh, increase those amounts there. All right, now we've got Grace. This looks much better on satellite imagery as we look at infrared when we get the cold cloud tops that means the thunderstorm activity is really really strong and starting to organize and we are indicating this by the shades of white here you can see flaring up all around the center this is jamaica and the center of the storm moving right along the north coast of jamaica south of cuba it is getting some land interaction so that is halting its overall structure a little bit and it's strengthening but it's forecast to move out into the very warm waters here in the western parts of the Caribbean and likely organize and strengthen quickly. Here's how it looks on visible satellite. You can see it's got that structure. It's got that look of a storm system that's just about to pop. And I'm going to show you exactly why I think this will get much stronger than it's forecast to in the coming days. We've got the outflow aloft here. You can see the feeder moisture bands to the south. Overall its structure is sound. The only thing stopping it from getting strong right now, of course, is the land interaction, as I mentioned, uh, with Jamaica. In terms of a moist atmospheric profile it's not extremely moist we've got dry air surrounding it off towards the west you can see the yellow shades here and certainly off to the east but i, I think it's going to wall itself off from any of that dry air uh, entrenched getting encircled or entrained into the system here's the forecast track on this as we go forward in terms of tropical storm grace up to a category one hurricane 80 mile per hour winds here by wednesday night now what i'm going to show you here is why this track is going to go pretty much due west over the coming days. Now we've got a range of high pressure expanding over the northern Gulf of Mexico, and that should do its job of not only shielding the Gulf Coast, but keeping Grace's track down to the south. Now it still will impact people out in the Yucatan Peninsula. We're talking Cancun, Playa del Carmen over there, gonna get some interaction here with that category one, if not stronger hurricane. It moves over the Yucatan, then re-enters the southern Gulf of Mexico where it has another spout of an intensification that will be likely. Now, how do the models see things? GFS Ensemble members here, we run the GFS several times, tweak it a little bit at initialization and get a slightly different outcome. Almost all the members are falling within that cone of uncertainty, so large consensus with the GFS. Now, the other models, pretty much the same thing. The majority of them do fall within that cone of uncertainty, but of course, there's always a few outliers, and some think that the ridging to the north might not be as strong or expand as far to the west, so it could take it a little bit farther to the north and west. Again, outliers here, the majority are taking it due west, southwest, so not going to be a huge problem as it looks right now. We'll still have to monitor it. Now, in terms of watches and warnings, Cancun area, the northern uh, Yucatan, under that hurricane watch already. Southern coast of Cuba, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, tropical storm watches and warnings. You're seeing it Im imminent impacts as it's moving through the area right now. All right, let's talk about why this storm is probably going to be a little bit stronger than what we're thinking right now. Mid-80s is the sea surface temperatures. Skin of the ocean, really, really warm. We need 80 degrees or warmer. We've got that easily. On top of that, we've got ocean heat content. Highest ocean heat content in the entire Atlantic Basin lies here in the Western Caribbean at the moment. What that is, is the warm ocean waters extend down to a depth. Hurricanes, as they move over the ocean, they do something called upwelling. They mix up the ocean. Typically, if you only got the warm water on the skin, you're going to mix up cooler waters, and that limits the strength of the storm. 
In this case, when you get a stronger storm, it's mixing up more waters, but it's just mixing up warmer waters from the depths. So that's why I think that Grace could be a candidate for rapid intensification. Could be our first instance of rapid intensification so far this season. And what that really means is an increase in its maximum sustained winds of about 30 knots, 34 miles per hour in 24 hours time. Now, if you look at the forecast track here, we're at 65 miles an hour. We're at 50 miles per hour right now. But by this evening, 65. By tomorrow morning, 75. So we're already up 25 miles per hour. It wouldn't be a far-fetched conclusion that we can get much higher than that and maybe get up to a Category 2 hurricane and achieve that rapid intensification status because of where this is located. Also, after it's interacting with Jamaica, it's got about 24 to 30 hours over the open waters here of the Western Caribbean before it does interact with land again, the Yucatan. In the past, when storms do interact with the Yucatan, sure, they're over land, they weaken a little bit, but the terrain is not all that enhanced here, and it's going to be moving at a pretty good clip and re-entering the Gulf of Mexico and uh, probably not losing a whole lot of structure in that time. Here's how the models see things, the GFS and the European comparison. GFS has a stronger storm in a little bit short amount of time. European lagging a little bit, but overall the timing is very similar. And then as we get into late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, making landfall along the Yucatan Peninsula just south of Cancun, over the Yucatan for maybe 12 to 18 hours, and then re-emerges back out over the Gulf of Mexico. And this is where it really starts to intensify. The GFS has it going down into central mountainous Mexico. And interacting with the mountains there, it'll die off very quickly. All right, Tropical Storm Henri. There's Bermuda right here, and this is looking a little bit better, especially earlier today. You can see that flare-up of convection. It's since lost a little bit. It is undergoing uh, some interaction with some wind shear, but overall pretty well-defined, and it's going to meander its way around Bermuda over the next couple of days, strengthen a little bit more, and I want to show you the modeling on this because some of these models do start to take it a little bit farther west, some of the farther west outliers do take it very close to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. If, in fact, that was to be the trend moving westwards, we'd see more impacts along the eastern seaboard there. But for right now, the forecast track does keep it safely offshore. We'll see if that uh, remains the case. I want to leave you today with a look at Hurricane Linda. This is out in the Pacific Basin. This was our first instance this season of an annular hurricane. Look at the size of that eye there. It looks like a truck tire, a buzzsaw. Moving on through the Pacific, the good news is with this storm not impacting anybody and it is on its way down in intensification. It's going to run into some cooler ocean temperatures and then eventually fall apart. But just a, an instance of beautiful nature right there. All right, until next time, you can find me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. David Paul will be up later today for another update.